So yet again, Sarah, we have to discuss Harry and Meghan. Considering they're no longer working members of the royal family, they do seem very, very successfully to keep themselves in the public eye and keep themselves in the headlines. Um, and, and what we're talking about here is what they might do following the parting of the ways with Spotify. So the Spotify deal was worth £20 million and it looks as if they may have to pay back a big chunk of it or may just not receive a big chunk of it. But tell me what they might well be planning to do next. Well, all the talk in Los Angeles, Vanessa, is of a big deal with Dior, the French fashion house for Meghan, and perhaps Meghan and Harry, uh, a deal in the many millions of pounds. Now, Meghan wore Dior for the Platinum Jubilee, the service of Thanksgiving there. She wore it for Archie's christening. Prince Harry wore a Dior morning suit for the King's coronation, and Dior promoted that in a tweet saying how honoured it was to have dressed the King's son for such a prestigious event. And the suggestion is there might be some kind of deal underway. Look, we know that Meghan has new talent agents. We know there's a rebranding underway. Are they going to rebrand themselves as kind of super influencers? As, as one branding expert talked about it, that it's easier to be a clothes horse than to campaign on issues, be an issues warrior. And certainly they've come up against an awful lot of criticism over recent months and years, haven't they? But this deal with Dior would certainly be very lucrative and also very high profile. Sarah, we'll come back to you in a second, but we're joined now by PR expert Mark Bukowski. I think he's the person uh, responsible for that clothes horse uh, comment, which has whizzed its way around the world about 20 times by lunchtime. Mark, hello. Thanks so much for joining us. So is this a perfect marriage of brands, Harry, Meghan and Dior, the fashion house? Yeah, I think it is. I think that, um, look, Vanessa, we learn a lot, not from our successes, but from our failures. And, and clearly... If that Spotify deal um, that they got was worth it, Spotify would still be hanging on to them. So, what do they, you know, what, what do they do next? Well, what they do next is reevaluate themselves, which they're doing, find perhaps better representatives, hopefully someone who's going to be a bit of a critical friend and perhaps not sort of, you know, just uh, lavish them with the Kool Aid. Um, and I think that's what the, her audience wants from her. They do want someone who is a style icon. Um, rather than something like a, a warrior. Uh, as you said in the previous item, it's, it's very, very difficult. It tracks a lot of, you know, opinion, most of it pretty negative around them. But they don't have to say much. They just have to sort of stand around looking very cool. And, um, you know, they could be the next sort of uh, um, Clooney's, you know, the, um, you know, Amal... Uh, and George Clooney, except, except Mark, as you know perfectly well, you know, Mal is a distinguished human rights lawyer who goes around the world, uh, you know, defending the rights of those who are oppressed. And George Clooney, not only one of the most successful and best actors in the world, oozing talent, but also a terrific director, writer, producer. I mean, the two of them are enormously productive. What it looks as if this um, uh, dissolution of the of the Spotify deal, and it's also suggested they may well be about to lose their Netflix deal too, it looks as if the Sussexes don't have any of that talent or indeed any of the desire to graft that the Clooney's have. So they won't be similar to the Clooney's at all, will they? Well, I'm talking about the aesthetics uh, rather than the substance, and I think that um, that that's the uh, that that's the look looking for. I, I I don't disagree with you, Vanessa. I think that's a that's a pretty smart summary. But the the the, the bottom of the bottom line, they need money. They need a lot of money for their lifestyle. Um, they've attracted a lot of negativity in this country, less so across the world, you know, the promotion of this image. And you know, Harry's in court, you know, being a warrior, trying to effectively, you know, change the sort of polarity of the fourth estate. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're mixed up, but it's not working. Whatever they're doing, they're not working. And, you know, if this doesn't work, how are they going to sort of generate the sort of income that they need for their lifestyle? It's a very cold and lonely place out there for them. And, um, you know, I, it must be very, very difficult for them to take on. And they have values. They had causes, they had issues, uh, and they've tried to get across them. But there's been a lot of sort of contradictions in that, you know, in terms of their eco personality and then obviously grabbing private jets to whizz them around the world. I mean, there's a lot of contradictions there. They've well, that, got to find... 
brand gonna, authenticity. They've that was going to be my next question, though, Mark, because as you quite rightly say, the Sussexes portray themselves and certainly like to portray themselves as espousers of really good and, and important and, 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 you know, uh, deserving causes. But Dior clothing and suitcases and perfume and jewellery, watches, whatever it is, you may love them, you may, you may not like them, you may aspire to them, you may not. But certainly they're for the wealthy, they're for the extremely well healed. You know, Kate and Wills, particularly Kate, you know, walking along in her high street clothes very often, whether they're from Reese or whether they're from, you know, H&M or whether she's wearing a pair of earrings from Accessorize or whatever it is. Very um, achievable for ordinary people, certainly within most people's scope. But this would be um, Harry and Meghan going very, very high end, very sort of unattainable to the rest of us, wouldn't it? Well, maybe that's where they that's where they need to go, because it hasn't really worked on, our, you know, for them up to date because of the critique. Mm. Look, every fashion brand now is struggling with its identity. Um, you know, we, we hear the great cries of sustainable fashion. Who knows what part that they might play into that? But you're correct. This is a very, very high end, very, very glossy, very upmarket role. Mm. Maybe that's where they exist. Um, but if they're just clutching at straws and not strategizing this and jumping on the next deal, mm -hmm. the next brand, the next organization is going to pay them the gazillions that they need, then it's going to fail. Because what I was trying to say there, it's about authenticity and they're yet to project any authenticity, no matter what they're doing. And that is the sort of golden ticket now in the 21st century with a with a very active audience who just doesn't take anything that's spoon fed to them. Mm. They'll always want to look inside the engine and see how it's running. And this is where they're beginning to sort of have their hiccups and their failures at the moment because it's not working well. And as I said, if in all their protestations through their content with Netflix, you know, and Spotify. You've got to have a great team behind you doing that. And you need people that actually can make them face up to some of the realities. And as I said, if things aren't working, what are you going to do to fix them? And maybe this is their fix, their need for large amounts of money to maintain the lifestyle that they've been accustomed and they need. I suppose the other thing, just to say, Mark, I know you've got to go, is, is you know, when there's a very high profile linking between a celebrity, not usually a member of the royal family, but a high profile celebrity and a product, it's all very well when you sign on the dotted line and you're doing the first much covered campaign. But scroll forward, sometimes it can be as little as 18 months, even sooner. And there's, there can be a falling out of love, there can be a failure to deliver, there can be a sort of discord, disconnect between the product and the celeb. And then the letting go of the celeb, and very often the moving on to a completely different person, so you were the face of whatever it is, and now you're not, that can be considered very sort of humiliating, demeaning, can't it? You're sort of demoted, you were the face, it didn't work, and now you're not. It's not a guarantee of a lifetime's employment at Dior, is it? No, no fashion brand. I mean, the mere fact that there is something in the title suggests they're looking for the next big thing that they've got to be ahead of. They've got to be ahead of the wave crashing on the beach. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's the way that you exit elegantly and you move on for your next role. So if they leave without something, you know, to talk about, and maybe this has softened the blow in terms of the negative headlines that are surrounded with the Spotify deal, then they've achieved something. But you've got to deliver. Um, and you, you're right, you know, you know, what is the advertising? What is the strategy behind it? Look, Dior don't throw money out around willy-nilly unless they actually believe they can achieve with something. They want to get their money back. If you think of the large amounts of money the likes of Spotify and, and um, Netflix have paid for them, they've got good value for money. They've got subscriptions. They've got a level of publicity that actually points people to what they're doing on their platforms. It's been a good deal for Spotify. It's been a very good deal for Netflix as well. And let me tell you, it'll be a very good deal for Dior. Dior will be investing in something and they will always be the 